to the New Earth Lawyer podcast, where we feature lawyers uh, who are changing the practice of law to change the world. I'm Geraldine Johns Putra. I'm your host, and I'm a lawyer myself, based in Melbourne, uh, Australia. Today, my guest is the lovely Virginia Warren. Virginia is a unique individual. She is a higher consciousness lawyer. She's a TEDx speaker. She's a conflict alchemist, an author, and a visionary. Until this year, she was a partner with a practice in Mornington in Victoria. Her TEDx talk, it's 15 minutes of riveting viewing, and I really recommend it to everybody. It's called Lawyers Are Trained to Break the Law. Her book, Let's Kiss All the Lawyers, Said No One Ever, is a lighthearted look at the darker parts of practice, the discontentment and the unhappiness. Today, Virginia runs a website called Lawyers for Love. So it's fair to say that Virginia is on a mission to bring love back to our profession. Virginia, it's great to have you. Thank you so much, Geraldine, uh, for the opportunity to speak on your show. I love what you're doing as well. We're so aligned here. So yes, thank you. I'm, I'm honoured to be here today. Thank you. Tell us your story. I, I really want to hear, and I think people are going to get a lot out of hearing, your fascinating journey to this place you're in now. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to start by saying there are no accidents on this planet ever. Um, the universe has a great plan for most of us. And I know that sounds woo-woo, but, you know, it, actually, if you hear that and you listen to it, you'll look at your synchronicities in your life and you'll say, oh, yeah, I see how that happened for a good reason. Well, my journey into law was quite fun. It wasn't really at the start because it was an accident. Um, I, I got into legal practice um, for, uh, I, I had my son and I'd worked in legal practices before and I had the opportunity to go back and do reception. And as it turned out, uh, because I was, it was, I was four months, yeah, my son was four months old at the time. And I said, oh, my brain's turning to mush sitting at home. And one of my girlfriends that was working in a local practice, she said, look, there's a reception job opened up. And I thought, oh, that'll be fun. Let's, let's just, just get back in and get our brain working. And as it turned out, no accidents, there was a, a brand new daycare centre physically built next door to that legal practice. So as a, I was able to put him in as a baby and breastfeed at the same time. So this is was, this was working so well. Then what happened was, you know, I just progressed. There's, you know, it all unfolded. A new, a new person from the city, he bought into this legal practice and he, you know, he, he needed some assistance because he'd worked in big city firms and hadn't run a small practice. Unfortunately, he had all these, these marvellous staff members that really sort of lifted the game because, as we know, most of the, the, the staff do run legal practices. Um, so just don't underestimate what your staff do for you. Completely. Yeah, and he, he saw my potential and then said, look, um, you know, I was helping him out. He said, do you want to go through, do you want me to put you through law school? And I said, oh, why not? I've got a toddler. Uh, I was married at the time and I was working full time. And, yeah, so not in order of difficulty so as to protect the innocent, I, <laughs> I took that job on. And I thought, why not? Yeah. I have a cape. I'm a superwoman. <laughs> do this. So I did. Um, and six years on. Well, seven years with articles um, and doing all that I got through. Uh, it wasn't without its challenge, but I really loved it. I loved mm. doing it. And I thought I'll help people. Everything will be awesome. And then I ended up buying into that practice later down the track. So The practice where a, you had been a reception. Yeah, yeah that's right. I love so that. It's a, it's a beautiful train of, of events. As I say, there are no accidents. Mm. And, you know, people transition and everything changed, but I bought in. And I bought in in 2008, it was. So it's quite a little while ago. And I was really enjoying practice and reflecting on all of those things, but knew something wasn't quite right. And one day I'm walking down Main Street, Mornington. I, there I am in my suit and heels. And these are my the leopard print shoes of destiny, I call them, um, because I was at the pedestrian crossing and at, I just tripped over out of nowhere. And I fall down on my hands and knees. There I am in the middle of the crossing. And I thought would these stripes open up and swallow me whole please because this is embarrassing and a, a lovely man got out and helped me up because <laughs> I just couldn't get up yeah. and um, I went off to my chiropractor really uh, as I say for my bruised ego and knees 
And he said to me, go and do some yoga. And I thought, oh, no, 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 no. I, I can't do yoga. I'm, I'm a Zumba girl, you know. I like okay. to sort of shake that thing. And, and he, said, he said, no, no, you, you do yoga for the knees and the ego. So off I went to my first yoga class. And um, what I found there surprised me. You know, it, it, it was like I'd been doing yoga forever. I, I wasn't excellent at it, but it just felt like home. Yeah. And I had to know why a bit of breathing and stretching and just the philosophies that were coming through the instructor really resonated. And I thought, like any good lawyer, I've got to go and get evidence. So with that, I did um, a 12-month diploma in yoga teaching. So you so, decided after you'd been doing yoga for not very long, you just loved it so much, off you go. You've just you've finished your law degree. You've bought into this practice. You, you know, you, you're, you're going along as a lawyer, off you go and get a diploma in yoga. In yeah, because you've got nothing else to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I did that. And um, it, it really shifted my perspective when I got into the philosophy behind yoga, mm-hmm. because we know yoga just isn't um, looking good in lycra. It's about breath. It's about... Um, ancient philosophy of connecting to self and connecting to all that is and that we are all connected Mm. we are the beautiful thing is uh, we're like the wave on the ocean we think we're individuals but really we're part of the whole ocean and we rejoin Mm. the whole like the wave does it is yeah that's it and we're all individual and the tricky part for me was when I learned all that and And it just really opened up the rabbit hole. And most of us that have been in this space, when we get that awakening or enlightenment in some respect, we start looking for more. Okay, Mm -hmm. what does this mean? What does this really mean? Because you know that the light bulb moment is, is there, like there's more to all this. So bringing it back into legal practice was a a real challenge for me because I I looked around and I thought it was the, it was the principle of a himza, non-harm. I thought, how do I bring that into legal practice? I've got practitioners on the other side yelling and, you know, no one's loving their life and everyone's miserable. So And doggy dog. I mean, people are just trying to to gain every inch for themselves and their clients. Yeah, despite our professional rules saying it's got nothing to do with the other practitioner, don't bring them down. No, those rules are off the table. It's, It's part of the, you know, playing the man and not the whatever it is. I don't know that saying. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Someone said that to me once. I thought, yeah, that's what they're doing. Um, so basically then what I did is I looked around and I thought, how can I bring this ahimsa or non-harm into legal practice? Mm-hmm. And I looked around at them, what wellness and all these things that the professions had to offer and our governing bodies. And I, I found a, pam- a pamphlet. I, now it wasn't, I think it was New South Wales or Victoria. I can't remember at the time. This is back in 2012 that fabulous year and it said something like yeah you know uh, eat well uh, exercise drink plenty of water speak to your supervisor and I think it's probably your supervisor that was causing you the grief in the first place and go and meditate and I thought you're talking to lawyers you know how a lawyer doesn't know how to meditate or why because we're, we're results driven you know we're, yeah. we've got to uh, get an outcome we've got to get in there and meditate and then something's going to happen well, it's the exact opposite of that. You know, don't expect anything and then that's exactly where you should be. Brilliant. So, I yeah. am giving advice to people on how to cope with long hours and I've said those things. And when it came to meditation, which I do now religiously, I said, I don't know how it works, but it works. Yeah. So go and do it. And you're right. You have to do it first and see the results. Yeah. And it's the opposite of what you think is go in and don't expect anything. Yes. Very powerful. Don't have, because lawyers are results driven. We want an outcome. We've got to get a result because that's what's been expected of us. We're trained. Mm -hmm. So I I was laughing to myself at that time. I thought, yeah, that's why that's a great idea. Great, but no, they're not going to do it. So then I, I, yeah, investigated more and I wrote my book at that point. And I had to write it with humor because I thought no one's going to read about suicide and depression if it's serious. So I had to make light of it. And I had to bring some uh, of the other reality into that. And the other reality being what I feel, and and now science has proven it all. So it's, it's, 
it's really if you if you've been hiding under a rock you don't know it's all energy people and that's who we are so we need to approach our existence and our problem solving from that point of view and so uh, yeah writing I thought I'll just introduce people gen gently to this topic um yeah, people probably, they would said to me, oh, Virginia, you know, like, oh, do you think you should? Oh, oh. I thought, well, I don't have a choice. This is my, this is what I have to do. It's, I don't, I want, you always have choices, but my pull to do that work was very, very strong. It was a deeper so, calling, right? Yeah, it that's it. So it had to go. level go. where if you didn't, you just couldn't live with yourself. I get that. Yes, yeah. you know that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. And I think there are many people now knowing this. They think that I know there's something else. What is it? There's been so much shaking up, so much energy shift now that I believe people are looking into their own lives and saying, what am I doing? What does it mean? Mm. Where am I going? And, and looking for yeah. answers outside, might I say, when what you're really talking about and my journey was the same, it's an inside job. So you you looked inside and you found answers and kept going. Yeah. And it is a, it's about connecting with the knowing that you have. Yeah. It's the knowing. Yeah. And many people have, as particularly lawyers, have switched off to the knowing because Oh, yes. I only know what's on the paper, what's on the case law, what's in the legislation, all these sorts of things. And that's out there and that's telling me what to do. That's my parent, basically. Mm. We're, we're all, you know, this is where Lawyers for Love came in um, as I've transitioned out of my legal practice because for me, um, I know I had bigger things to do and that litigation wasn't part of it anymore. So you were um, practising litigation uh, and also... Um, uh, practice in wills, estates, yeah. family law, family a general law. practice. Yeah. And you'd done that then for for more than a decade. Yes, yeah. that's right. And and discovered how dissatisfying it is for not only the pr practitioners but the clients also because the outcomes were focused more on, yeah, the physical of what I'm going to get out of this uh, from a physical perspective and from a blame perspective, when we're looking at litigation, it's someone else's fault all the time. So they come to a lawyer, they hand over their problem to you and say, hey, you fix it for me. Whereas we need to look inside, like you yeah. just said. We yeah. need to have introspection inside and say, why is this actually happening? Why is it happening? So I just want to, before we get on to that, which is fascinating, was it difficult for you to move out of the practice that you'd, you'd come through for all of your career and move on to what you knew you had to do? No. <laughs> <laughs> what no, a great because, answer. Because um, I see many practitioners struggling with identity. Uh, for me, it's... I've never labelled myself as a lawyer, you see, and mm -hmm. identified with that. It's I've never really identified with anything, but that's me. And I see um, th this is why Lawyers for Love was born because it's really a, a situation we're saying, and I'll sort of circle back to this, um, we see the legal, the, the law, the rule of law as being a fear-based system. Mm. So we'll go back to the snail and bottle case. You know, I'm not going to go into the details, but the important thing was it was it sort of gave birth to tort, the tort of negligence, really. Uh, but from society imposes upon, upon a situation what society needs at a time, and that's a very energetic thing and a very big topic. But what I want to say is Lord Atkin said, uh, love thy neighbour. Mm. Now, the, there's a couple of things in that, but but the beautiful thing was that I, I've been having a little joke about recently, and this is really the foundation of Lawyers for Love, is the law says love thy neighbour, else we won't love you, we will punish you, whereas love would say love thy neighbour, and if you can't, we will show you how to do that. Yeah. yeah. So there's a fundamental difference between the legal system, which is punitive. If you don't do what we say, we're going to hurt you. <laughs> We're not going to ask you why you did it. You know, we'll look into it a little bit, but if there is there some sort of defence or whatever, but then the defence is generally go blame somebody else because I had nothing to do with this, you know, because we don't want to be wrong. We're always looking for love 
this is the human nature is we are, are born as loving beings and as we've as we've been entrained with the rules of society including that we i call it the tribe the parents uh, and there's no blame on anybody again never there's never blame it's not about blame it's about self and, and mm -hmm. evolution and we're trained to think you know boys don't cry girls don't get angry these little rules that we've got or you must achieve to be, get love then you go out into the world and try and do that you have it you're not following the, the rules you don't know whose rules to follow anymore and then you've got the rules outside of you and what we're saying is if we're looking and learning to make decisions from a loving place, then you have basically dropped everyone else's rules. So for example, boys don't cry, you know, don't have an emotion, men. I mean, how can you connect with people if you don't have emotion, if you can't be who you were born to be, you have limited your choices. And by limiting your choices, we're all becoming cookies, you know, like, and this is coming back to the identity of a lawyer. You know, we were expected, oh, you'll do well in school. Oh, you'll be a lawyer. You're, you're smart. You know how to argue. Yep. Um, so, and you've built this amazing identity, which kept you safe. And it got you love because everyone loves me because I'm a lawyer. They say, this is important. But who are you under that, that label? Who are you? Who's the authentic you? Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing now, Lawyers for Love are seeing, um, is that, more people are looking for their authenticity. Even yeah. if they're practicing lawyers, I want to do it my way. I want to be more authentic. And what you're doing by healing the individual, because you're talking about wounds people create or have had created for them. And once you heal the individual, you're healing much more than that because the aggression that might come out of a repressed emotion is going to spill out of a person. Let's say it's a man who has been taught you don't do that. Well, then it's going to bottle up and it's going to come out. And Domestic he... violence, precisely. Totally. And, and, you know, I've got plenty to say about that that people don't want to hear, but it is that. It is yeah. simply that man has created a rule. We call them rules rather than trauma and all this stuff anymore because you're focusing on such negativity when we're talking trauma focused for me this is where we're seeing it because wherever you your energy goes you know your focus goes that's where the energy flows so if you're focusing on trauma that's what you're creating more of so we're looking at you created a rule it kept you safe good job you yeah. created because in your family the, the tribe said don't cry young man or you won't be a man and so that young man decided all right i'm going to bottle up these emotions and i'm going to be this stoic creature which is not me but it kept me safe at the time. So we're, what we're teaching is for people with a conflict, because you go to a lawyer with your conflict, is to say, let's look at where that rule was created and go back and self-validate. Yes. At the time, you created the rule. You did the right thing by you. You kept yourself safe. You don't need the rule anymore. Drop it. Because you've brought the unconscious into the consciousness mm. now and you're able mm. to flow with that. Mm. So, yeah, and that brings people back to love because – dropping the rules or the, the traumas or the self-limiting beliefs or whatever you want to call them brings you back to authenticity, back to love. Now, people don't like the love word, but love is simply a state of being without the fears being present. Mm, mm. It's the fundamental state of being. That's it. It's not a doing thing. We're not talking love as a doing. We're talking about it as a being. So what you're saying occurs to me that it's um, you, you're, you're kind of, we've been trained or we've been conditioned to do things at a gut level. And then as lawyers uh, and say business people or professionals, we're working up here in our minds. And it has occurred to me that there's this cutoff, which is here and we don't go through it. We actually just avoid it altogether. And, and that's what creates this dissonance you know, because we're not understanding the emotions we've, either repress them or, you know, or, or we've converted them into something that isn't quite healthy or we're, we're giving too much of it, you know, whatever it is, it's not a healthy balance. But if we learn that's to go it. through you know the heart. It. Yeah, that's it. You know you're out when you've got a negative emotion, you know you're out of that alignment, there's mm. that dissonance. Mm. You know you're not in, in connection with your authenticity anymore. There's something within you that's someone else's rule. 
Yes. It yes. belongs to somebody else, not you. Yes. And so you've got to go find it. And where it, sh- it shows up in your environment, it, it's your mirror. And yeah. it's perfect because, yeah, you go to a lawyer with that. And they say, oh, look at what's happening around you. This is where you've got an unconscious belief because, of course, the beliefs are unconscious. The rules are unconscious. You don't know they're there. Most people can't see what, what's going on. Why do I feel so bad? And so, yeah, that's what we're saying. That's why the legal profession can be used in a more positive way. But they say, oh, no, you know, it's, that's a job of a psychologist. I disagree. I really disagree. I, I just say, what, why does it have to be that? You see the conflict there you can very easily show your client where they've got this unconscious belief and it has nothing to do with the other party. Yeah. Nothing. The other party's shown up as your mirror. Simple. Which is what you were saying about it's, it's, it's actually not blame. So it's not about blaming the person for creating the conflict. You're not saying, okay, well, you, you shouldn't blame the other person. Now you blame yourself. It's actually empowering. Once a person realizes that they have all of the tools within them and what you're doing is helping them access those tools, you're not giving them the tools, you're helping them access their own. Their own. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And, and, and they're empowered, yeah. self-validating. It, yeah, it is. This, is the, this is the key because a lot of people understand the shadow work, but we've taken it one step further and said, this is the point to self-validate because most of humanity thinks I'm not worthy. Mm. I'm not valid because they told me when I was a kid, I wasn't valid. My response to life wasn't valid. It wasn't validated by the tribe. It was invalidated. So I'm walking around as a person. Apparently I can't make my own decisions because they said I was wrong. Mm. And we carry that belief with us all our lives. And so when we know how to find them, we just dissolve them and say, well, that's ridiculous. Of course I know how to deal with my own own responses. And that goes down to addiction, uh, uh, murder, uh, rape, everything. Mm. Everything. Mm -mm. And when we see it in that different light, it's we can have compassion for everyone in their story. Like, oh gee, what you know, what rules did you create? (laughs) Tell me about because I think this is going to be useful for people listening. Tell us about shadow work. What do you mean by shadow work? Yeah, okay. Um, Carl Jung really was my inspiration here. Um, he has been dealing, he was a bit of a mystic as well. So his work was not taken that seriously until very recently. And there's some very big Jungian fans out there. But mm-hmm. he actually drew his work from shamanism as well, which, it, which is really my heart. That's where my heart lies. And it is very simply, um, we create a shadow. And when we have disconnected from a part of ourselves so we've really just covered up a part you can't you can't you're you're always whole you're always there you are perfect but you're not connecting to a part of you so let me give you a little example as when we say in society when we say that person is bad put them in jail we're effectively because we are one and we are part of the one energy we're just looking at that person saying I don't accept you and the badness of you, which means you don't accept yourself. Or another good example is say you're in a relationship with someone and they're getting angry and you think, I don't like anger. Don't be angry at me. And you get, you get angry back or you get upset. You're saying anger is unacceptable. That's a shadow you have, you, it's actually you, you're mm. saying, I don't find anger acceptable, but actually anger is perfectly acceptable when it's used properly. Mm. It creates a beautiful boundary, creates motivation, creates action. But you, when you say it's unacceptable, you have disconnected to your own anger. Yes. But, but it shows up for you in all other people because it, it annoys you. You don't want to see that anger. You don't want it. You don't like it. Whereas You're ignoring accept- it, pushing your buttons then. Oh, yeah, just saying, up, hello, up. I am actually here. That's right. And it's showing you that you aren't accepting anger. Yeah. Why don't you? You have to sit with yourself and ask that question. And this is, this is the magnificence of the planet. Of if we see everything as if that gives me a negative energy, there's something in it for me. Mm-hmm. it's an opportunity mm-hmm. everything is good there's no good or bad mm-hmm. it's it's well it's whatever you assign to to that belief yeah system so that's basically a shadow it's a part of you that you've disconnected from because you are all that is you are all the emotions you're all the colors of the pencil box as i say um because you know when we're children 
what happens is the parents will come along and say, okay, yeah, girls don't get angry. Uh, I just use those classics because they are generally classics in relationship, but there's there's plenty of them. And they'll say, oh, all right, so uh, you, you you know, you're coloring in and you're pen- with, you got all your pencils there and they come along and say, don't use blue. We don't use blue in this household. Mm-hmm. So you go along your whole life and you're not, you, you can't complete the picture because you think the picture's complete and you go out and you think, oh, why are they using blue? That's not acceptable. We don't use blue. And you get angry at it, you do, you know, but you don't realise actually that belongs to me. And when I get it back, I've got my full set of pencils. I can colour whatever I want. I have all these choices available to me and I come back to authentically me and I get peace yeah. because when you're sitting in that place of you can make any choice you want, nothing can affect you. Nothing makes you upset anymore because if it does, you think what rule is present? Oh, I can't use blue. I can't get angry. You know, these these are rules. They're just rules you've imposed on yourself. And once you're whole and you've integrated the shadow, you can recognize that it's a rule and say, oh, no, but this rule doesn't apply to me. I'll use blue if I want to, or I'll get angry if I want to in this situation. And so you're right. You you walk in peace, which is beautiful. So do you do shadow work in the Lawyers for Love? Yes practice yeah, now. that's it yeah we, we call it a self-validation technique now mm. really because it is teaching people how to self-validate yeah and we are teaching lawyers how to bring this technique into their own practices because this is vital when you when you're showing a person for example if you're showing a person that they can never be wrong because as we know when we're acting for a client you can act for one client party I can act for the other and we have to find the best parts of their case <laughs> and say that they're right um, but we've got a win-lose model, so it doesn't really work. When we, because lawyers are brilliant at perspective, we can see everybody's part mm. in the in the play. So effectively, based on my uh, the rules that I created when I was young, based on my perspective of this world, I can't be wrong. For example, I will say, you know, you might love pineapple and I don't love it, and you're going to say no, but pineapple's great, and I'm going to say no, it's crap. I don't like pineapple. It's awful. There's nothing you can do to change my mind because, and this is war. You know, this is, yeah. it, it sounds stupid, but that is exactly what war is. It's just like, well, okay, I, I see that you like pineapple. All right, well, you know, I might think that it's not my preference, you know, whatever. And even for things that are, appear negative, they mightn't be a preference that we have in society, but we have to ask why is that person doing that? Let's have compassion for them on their journey. Why are, you, why are you murdering people? Why are you raping people? Why? Let's ask the question. Not if, you put, if I put you away. Yeah, there are some very hard cases. And every time I talk about this, I get those hard cases. And I think if we can all just come back to basics and see that everyone's truth is true for them always. Now, if it's not a preference for somebody else, don't hang out with them move on don't try and change them you cannot change you do not have control over anybody but yourself because it's about it's about honoring people's free will yeah which is critical yeah which society can't seem to do because we have rules the law you have to fit in this box and you have to do it this way because they said but hang on in the other another country they've got a different set of rules and you know my friends have got a different set of rules and the the beautiful thing is we are, we have, and I love this example is like that we have a rule that says don't kill people, mm. yet people still kill people. Mm. Yeah, we know there's defenses, we know all that sort of thing, but the bottom line is why we kill somebody is because we feel better in the doing of it. Our internal legal system, the internal laws or rules we're carrying, are far more powerful than any rule out there. That is why you will sit and eat a block of chocolate, even though you know it's going straight to your thighs. You just uh, yeah, I know the rule, eat all the chocolate, it goes straight to my thighs, I'm still going to eat it because I'm feeling better in this moment doing it. Mm. I'll have all the guilt afterward. Mm. And, and that's what we're not looking at. We're not looking at what internal legal system are you running that compels you to do what you do. Yeah. It's just like you didn't obey the laws out there. Yeah. Uh, mm. I want to come back to what you mentioned about shamanism you said that that's something that you really identify with and yes that's very intriguing to me because shamanistic practices they're about uh, healing people or gaining knowledge when the shaman who is the proponent 
does that by tapping into something that's non-physical, yeah. maybe transcending this consciousness that we're aware of, transcending this reality. Can you tell me why that speaks to you? The shamanism, what I took from shamanism was uh, the soul retrieval, yeah. what they call soul retrieval. Now, there's a lot of ritualism. And let me get back to when I first went down the rabbit hole of looking at everything. Why I wrote my book the way I did is because I found a common thread in all philosophy, which was we are one. We are connected to all that is. Mm. And so shamanism brought in the idea of fragmentation the retrieval mm. of soul. Mm. And whilst I don't I don't ritualize anything, if it works for you, it's called a permission slip. Just do whatever works for you. But the idea of soul retrieval is, is basically bringing back the fragmented parts of you, the shadow, the rules. So I've related it now. I've taken that idea, idea and we put it in a, a, around the legal system and called it the rules that you've created which create an internal legal system mm, mm. within you. You're the judge. You're, you're your own judge, jury, and executioner. We know that. Yeah. But you see the legal system that's external to us is projected from our internal legal systems. This is how it's come to be. So effectively we have, we still want parenting. So we created rules for ourselves. We, we were used to getting parented because that kept us safe. Oh, let's put a parent out there in society why we know if we're really connected to ourselves we know right action and if we don't we need those around us who love us enough to guide us back to right action so mm -hmm. we'll love you anyway we love you because if if something's happening in society it is my problem too yes because I've, I've, I've i've helped create this correct and you are part of the whole yeah and that's where shamanism comes in too because uh, shamanism is very diverse it's an indigenous way of being across the yeah. planet. I think it started in Siberia. And, you know, we have our, our Aboriginal people who are shamans, you know, amazing shamans as yeah. well. And there's slightly different practices, but they all follow their own practices. Mine is a very simple way. It's a modern idea. And we don't need a ritual to do mm. that. We just need to look at our reflection and see, okay, there's the part of me. It's out there. It's like, I'm not accepting that. Why not? <laughs> I would say, and tell me what you think about this, that in the times we're in, which is really about massive change, we are moving to a simplification of those things, away from ritual. Yes, we're, I believe we're moving away from ritual, absolutely. So enlightenment to me simply means finding the shadow or the unconscious belief or rule, shining a light on it, that is bringing the unconscious into the consciousness again, then you're enlightened. The yeah. trick for humanity is keeping it there because we have, we have grown up with patterns. They're, they're unconscious programs that you are used to. You, just, you drive your car. You don't even think about driving your car. And you'll just drive it. If someone says to you, drive it on the other side, you know, the left side or the right side, you're going to have to relearn. Yeah. This is the hard part for humanity is relearning a different way of being, uh, not slipping back into your old pattern. And, and often with the, the little techniques we've, we've provided people, it is all self-learning. And when you get excited about it, and I, the only thing I really say to people is check in how you feel. Mm. It's all about how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? That's the mantra. How do you feel? Because if you're feeling negative, you know, there's a rule present. And it's as simple as that. So are you are helping uh, lawyers. Are you also helping clients who might come to you with a legal problem? So you were talking before about how people say, "Here, fix this uh, yeah. for me," because you know I want you to find a way to blame that other person. Are you also working through that with people so that you're yeah. showing them? Ah, yeah, it's it's about our ability to respond. Life, your life is your reaction to it. Mm. So if you've reacted negatively to your partner or your business partner or whatever it is. That's your work. It's your ability to respond to them that's in question for you. If yes. you want to feel better about life, learn how to respond. It's called responsibility. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's that's where we're we're looking. But what we're doing, Lawyers for Love is, is sort of scaling this up now. Okay. Um, to to we're we're training the lawyers to work with it, and we're bringing in the clients so that clients that want that approach will find lawyers through our platform uh -huh. to 
be treated that way. It's all very new. Um, we've only been in operation for nearly 12 months now, but okay. and now I, I'm just running a program very shortly with lawyers globally. I've got lawyers in China and, and America and Australia that are beta testing this program with me now. So I've got feedback so that it's palatable mm -hmm. um, for lawyers because, of course, you know, we, it's called perspective-based lawyering. So because we say every perspective is true. Yes, and, yes. And that it's all based in energy. You need to look at a human now as if they're an energetic being with different frequencies. So if you're resonating with something negative, that's a shadow. That's a rule. Let's look at that. Yeah, different different frequencies. Going back to that idea of you know, we're, we're all energetic, so we'll yeah. we'll hit a frequency that we recognize or not, like a like a radio station That's tuning it. into a certain frequency. Because people say, you know, I've got a high vibe. You know, I'm feeling yeah. the vibe. You yeah. know, everyone says it. Everyone knows it. Don't lower but, the vibe. Yeah, yeah, people know it. Yeah, um, but they're just dismissing it as reality, and it's come into the High Court of Australia now. Okay. It's been spoken about in the High Court. Uh, we had a case last year, Love in the Commonwealth. Um, oh, yes. It was handed yeah. down in 2020. But there's some beautiful words in there about um, the Indigenous peoples, and they're talking about their relationship to land was being uh, as, as they are identified as being an organic part of one indissoluble whole. Mm. And I thought, well, how does that differ from any other human on the planet? Um, it's our belief system. So we're, they're saying... The, the common lawyer ha deals in one-way proprietary rights, but that doesn't apply to the Indigenous because of their connection to all things. I thought, well, you know, we actually all are connected to all things, so yeah. this no longer really is in the realms of the common lawyer. Yes. And I've got a lot to say about that, but that's for another time. Uh, and also, you know, I bring into this training uh, that we are the, the scientific basis of our energetic nature that we're in a magnetic field electromagnetic fields all these beautiful things that it's beyond doubt who we are yeah but it's just retraining ourselves to see it that way and bring in an entirely new perspective to the way we're dealing with conflict internalizing it because what happens when when one begins this journey as you said of finding out what the the true nature of reality is it it's fascinating but it's kind of parked in one section of the the brain shall we say and more and more and more it becomes central until you're completely you've completely internalized it and then that's yeah. a way of life so what you're doing is you're spreading that message so people can actually say no no it's not just something that i read about you know after work or i do as a, a hobby in my spare time it's how i life. live it you yeah know, it's life you've embodied it now yeah embodied it, it, it really perfect. is an embodiment of this way of being and when you've seen it, it's like one of those 3D images. You know, when you look into those weird pictures and you, something pops out at you, when you see this, you can't unsee it. Yeah. And you think, why didn't I see it before? But it's just our programming, simple as that. So uh, Lawyers for Love, you're doing that in partnership with somebody else? When you say yes, we? Yes, Tim Williams. Uh, yeah, Tim Williams. Uh, he's the co-founder of Lawyers for Love. We're both... Mm -hmm. uh, very much in this space yeah. uh, we see life completely differently but we work together for some time to we come in from slightly different angles but it's all about love-based decision making okay. so when you're when you're making a decision based in love all of you is present and you don't have influence from another person outside of you mm -hmm. so it's just like this is the authentic me making because we make decisions thousands and thousands of decisions every moment of every day and if we're making them based on somebody else we're not living an authentic life yeah, And that's when we, we go out and we find a conflict so that we can say, oh, okay, I'm not being authentic. Uh, I'll, I'll, let's correct course, w work with our internals and, and move back to a love-based decision-making. Then I get a satisfactory life. I'm content with yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. And so, yes, Tim Williams is, is the co-founder of Lawyers for Love. And, yeah, we just... We were so excited to bring this concept into the legal space. We're brave enough um, and people can see that, oh, yeah, we, we see what they're doing. And people are slowly peeking out, oh, what are they doing there? We don't necessarily like that love word, but. <laughs> but there's something <laughs> but interesting that's drawing them to it. Yeah, yeah. they're intrigued, which I, I found it. I've, I've had lawyers saying I'm intrigued with what mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I love that word, intrigued. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia, thank you so much. This has really been a beautiful and uplifting conversation. I know that Lawyers for Love is going to be successful. I know you're going to reach lawyers and their clients and you're going to change the world with it. 
Yes, thank you, Geraldine. And it just takes all lawyers like yourself as well just to bring this beautiful shift of energy into the legal system. And as you as you know, you know, you can't bring it into a system. You really have to create an alternate system. Yeah. People just it's like the non-smoking movement. People eventually become non-smokers when they see that it feels much better. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.